Jesus loves us. Jesus loves us. Jesus loves us. What up, guys? It's your boy APT Songs here, back with a music album review, and this time it's for Eminem's newest album, The Death of Slim Shady. This has Eminem back on his old tricks as Slim Shady, where he's doing songs that have very, very, very inappropriate lyrics. Like, oh my God. Like, do not let your kids, if you're, if you're a responsible parent, do not let your kids listen to this album because it's got a lot of, aside from just cursing, a lot of the various concepts on the album are, I consider to be very, very inappropriate. As I find them hilarious, mind you, but a lot of inappropriateness. But it's interesting because, you know, he put out a tweet before this album that said, make sure you listen to this album in the exact order as the track listing to get the full feel of what the album's supposed to be. And I understand now why he said that because the the album is it starts off with him being slim shady and then it's going into this like fight he's having with the marshall mathers version of himself where it's like he's trying to basically tell his old self like why are you coming out and doing this why are you saying these things on these albums why are you going after these people why are you hitting targets that have been dead for a long ass time why are you saying these various things that don't need to be said anymore are you purposely trying to get canceled and so it's almost like a battle between slim shady and marshall mathers and eminem until at one of the songs i won't tell you which one but at one of the songs slim shady eventually like gets killed off for good and then the rest of the song the, the album is like eminem and marshall mathers so I think on a, as a person that went to, through uh, college for theater, I think on a theatrical level, this actually works to the album's favor because then it's like you now as a listener have an excuse to listen to all the horrible, horrible things you're about to hear him say. Because later on in the track listing, he like checks himself and says, dude, that thing you said on like song number uh, four, for example, why did you even release that? That wasn't necessary. Why are you saying these very things over here? Like, what's the deal? It's almost in a way the album's allowing you to basically be forgiven for enjoying anything you may have heard earlier that wasn't appropriate. And he is going at all kinds of targets on this album. I'm talking trans people. I'm talking um, well-known celebrity figures that have been in the news recently for abusing people, for taking drugs, for overdosing, for going back at him. Like he's running the full gambit of his powers as Slim Shady. And let me tell you, it is hella enjoyable. Even though at times, as a, as a long time Slim Shady and Eminem fan, I was very uncomfortable at times when I was hearing him go at certain people or say certain things. But again, that's the character and that's what he's trying to do. Therefore, it is acceptable. As to, in terms of Eminem's delivery, still stellar. He has been an, an artist for years now that has been able to have a variety of different flows, of different deliveries, of different vocal patterns, of different structures of things, of different ways of of uh, voicing out certain things that he's trying to talk about, the various concepts. Like his general concepts always been like, I'm gonna say what I want. But even within that, he's been able to differentiate it enough to where sometimes the way you hear him, you don't realize he's he's still doing this purposely to offend you and get at you, right? Mixed in with, he still has songs on here that are very poignant and that are actually like tugging at the heartstrings. I, I reacted to this during a stream where, you know, the song Temporary, which is him talking to Haley and playing old clips of her back in the studio when she was a younger kid, like had people crying and like falling out. So he has a variety of things on here, but the the bulk of the album is him as Slim Shady. And I think in terms of his Slim Shady character, if this was his way of killing off that character, I get it because it's only so far you can go before it's like, okay, the stick is getting old. But he's been doing the Slim Shady stick for 25 years now. I'm still not tired of it. But if this is how he's going to retire the character, then I think the thematic way he went about doing it was fantastic. In terms of standouts on this album, my God. So I'll say this. There's a song here called Brand New Dance, which I will not give away what that is about. That is one of the most offensive songs that I've ever heard in my entire life. And even with it being uncomfortable to listen to, I was like, bravo for that. I thought that Antichrist with Bizarre, Bizarre makes an appearance from D12, and just his little bit of rhyming on this, I, that was a standout on this album. Like, I was like, what the freak? He's got whole segments here that like go into different, that, that go into uh, themes that are back to back. Like he has a song called 
uh, Lucifer, which then goes into Antichrist. Here's a song called Fuel that get, that then goes into Road Rage. Of course, we have the two singles that have already been released, Houdini and Toby, which in the context of this album actually fit in the places where they're supposed to. I already liked Houdini as it was, but Houdini coming right after Road Rage, which is then going into another song that that uh, speaks on how he was acting in that previous song, in addition to other songs I thought was great. Uh, there are some things that are missing from this album. I do wish that D12 had showed up on the album. It would have been nice to have a detailed reunion outside of Bazaar. Uh, Dr. Dre is here, but only in the beat-making capacity. He's not here in terms of like having being on any songs, so I kind of wish that he had showed up also. But I think in terms of like what we have here to offer, I think it's overall pretty great. I will say the album itself has a couple of bonus tracks, but they're not, if you go to stream it on like uh, Spotify or Apple, they're not readily there on the main album. So I will say this, in terms of the main album, I think that in terms of how it ends, it ends on the song Somebody Save Me with Jelly Roll, which is, it's an okay track. It's another somber song where he's talking about like, oh, like it, basically if you guys heard Revival, at the end of the Revival, he had two songs where it sounded like he was about to die, but then he reverses time and is, and is alive again because he flushes the pills down the toilet. This album, it's almost like, what if he had actually died, right? And so it goes into Somebody Save Me, where it's a very somber song. And it's not like a bad song. It's just based on all the craziness I heard in the previous parts of the album, it doesn't, for me, end on a strong note. Like, I think the bonus tracks that aren't on the standalone album would have would have made for better enders of an actual album. As such, it kind of ends for me on a whimper, not on a very strong note, because previous albums of his, he ended up on on songs that were more like upbeat and more or upbeat, but also like more either offensive or more energetic. And that's not just how this album ends. And given that the rest of the album is energetic, I think this album, if it had come a little bit earlier in the track listing and he had ended on a more like more upbeat or stronger song, then it would have ended a lot better. So I will say this overall, I think that the album itself is a strong contender for like one of the more stellar albums in his uh, catalog. Way better than Revival for sure. And so I, I definitely say it's worth a listen. I'd say it's worth buying. If you gotta, if you still buy albums, it's definitely worth buying and taking a listen to. Definitely, if you find a version of this album with the bonus tracks, get them. Because he has a bonus song on here with 2 chains, and 2 Chains is spitting like his life depended on it, and it's absolutely a stellar track. But yeah, this album was a very good listen. But again, it is a it is the definition of a mature album. Like if they could give this an NC-17 rating, they probably would. So definitely listen to it with the ear with the headphones on because if you're trying to bump this in your car or like walking around just bumping it out of your phone or whatever, I, I assure you, people will be giving you second and third and fourth looks like what the freak's going on. But in the context of the story he's trying to tell, the Slim Shady character here makes sense. The point at which he becomes Marshall Mathers and Eminem makes sense. And I just had a, a good, if uncomfortable time listening to this album. But let me know your guys' thoughts. Did you like the album? Did you not like the album? Let me know down in the comments below. Also guys, be sure to check out my newest album, Allow Me to Reintroduce Myself, which includes my new track. It's the Kendrick Lamar parody of Not Like Us called Jesus Loves Us, along with a slew of some of my prior tracks that I've re-recorded so they sound better, as well as some brand new bangers that are sure to get you through this summer and beyond. So thank you guys for checking out this video. Be sure to give me a like, give me a subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next reaction. I'm out. Peace. Yo, you